This is hydrogen tap. I'm doing more tests on the focus cell and uh, testing the integrity of the cell itself. There's your amperage there on the right, voltage on the left. The last test I did was without the straps on the top, as you can see them here. This one is with the straps. What I'm really interested in is this screw here, this nylon screw, and seeing how the plates are reacting. What I've got here on the side of the plates, they're uh, not... I didn't smooth the uh, sides, the, the plate out so you got rough edges on there and if you look real close one thing though on the cell that's going to be in the tube it will not touch the bottom so there will be a difference there's six plates here Again, that's the voltage on the left. I've got two 12-volt batteries in parallel so that it'll support the amperage, 1146. This is your temperature of the water, 66 degrees Fahrenheit. There's one gallon of water in here. If you look at the cell now, you'll have noticed that I've now got three electrodes on here. These two support the cell. The third electrode supports the water sensor. And the way that's going to work is the third electrode will be in common with the negative side of, of the plate. And that's going to give me the water sensor. And the way that works is this. This plate will be on the bottom like this. You see the length. So when that plate is on the bottom of the electrode hits the water and one side of the other electrode which is hitting the cell goes through a meter device then you're able to tell whether the water level is at that level or not. So again, what's happening is I have this plate here. It goes down. And when it touches the water level, in common with one of the other electrodes here, I measure the difference in if there is electrolyte between these two plates, meaning the plate that's on the cell and this plate, then I can connect that up to a transistor or whatever to determine the water level. 
and that's going to work out just fine. Also, it's very sturdy, and that's what I'm after here. On this focus cell, everything is going to be really very sturdy. You can see the ports. Um, there's the bottom. To further the experiments, one of the things I have been asking, and everyone else, or a few people, have been asking as well is the temperature problem when winter comes. One of the things I always wanted to know was whether lye in the water would keep it from freezing. So I put this lye up to this level, the water, distilled water with lye up to this level in a freezer for two hours. Actually, it's been three hours now. And this is what we get. And if you look, this is all ice. So after about three hours, That's in a freezer, so that doesn't mean that, uh, there's a good look at it, I think. You can see the ice in the bottom. So that's in the freezer for three hours, and you definitely see the ice in it. It didn't completely ice up, but it's enough to cause problems. And uh, whether or not the winter would be cold enough to do that, I, I would have to say I'd worry about it, but it's going to have to be pretty cold. At least we know. The next step that I'm getting ready to do now is to put together the water reservoir that's going to fit on this. And I'll show you that tomorrow. Our thing I want to show you here. One of the problems when you use meters is that when you put the meter and your jacks together, you run the risk of shorting this with something else. So what I do, what I've been doing, is putting them together in something like this and it works really well so now there's no chance of it shorting out with something else I don't have to worry about it I've had plenty of shorts again if you want to write me at John Aarons at hydrogentap.com more than happy to answer any questions you have or you can go on my site hydrogentap.com and see what I have there I have put up the Myers patent. All the pages are there, I believe. 